we're excited to bring you variables for typography in Figma. Instead of introducing new variable types, we can now use two existing ones, string and number variables, and apply them to a variety of font properties. String variables can be applied to font family, font style, and font weight names. Number variables support numeric values of font weight, as well as line height, font size, paragraph spacing, letter spacing, and paragraph indent. With variables for typography, you can manage a type system faster and easier than before. Adjust text properties based on the language being used, and use a combination of variables in a text style, so you won't have to memorize all the properties of your display text or paragraph styles. In this video, we'll create variables and incorporate them into an existing typography system. Then we'll use variable modes to power a responsive design. We only apply variables to text styles in this tutorial, but they can be applied to text layers as well. If you haven't already, make sure you're caught up with the basics of variables, variable modes, and text styles. We've linked resources to these topics below. The team at Habits, an app for developing sustainable habits and goals, currently uses text styles in Figma for their typography system. They're planning on launching a responsive blog this year, as well as a couple of large-scale features. Because variables can help with scaling and maintenance, they decided that setting up variables for their typography system is an important next step. Let's help them get started by setting up variables for font family first. In this system, there are two unique font families, Space Grotesque, used for title text, and DN Sans for body text. We want to set up two string variables, one for each family. That way, if we need to change the main fonts in our system, we can do so quickly. Let's open up the variables model and create a new variable collection called typography. We'll start with space grotesque first. Create a string variable and give it a meaningful name. We'll call this one font forward slash family forward slash title. The forward slashes tell Figma to create groups, which we use to help organize our variables. The first group is font and nested within it is another group for family. The last string of letters after the final forward slash is the name of the variable. Now we'll use the exact spelling of the font family, space grotesque. The name will also work if you include hyphens or underscores when using a different casing and with or without spaces. Now let's create our second string variable. Press Shift Enter to duplicate the variable we just created. It was automatically added to the group we want it to be in, so we can skip the forward slash naming convention. We'll name it body and give it the value DM Sans. Great. Now let's implement these new variables into our existing text styles. Let's start with our title 3x large style. Hover over the style and click edit style. From the modal, open the font family dropdown and click apply variable. A modal will appear with the string variables available for selection. Since this text style is used for title text, find the string variable named title. You will also see the value of the variable in gray, which is the name of the font family we want to use. Once we select the variable, its name appears in a gray pill in the font family dropdown. Let's do the same for the remaining title textiles, as well as the body textiles. Now, if we ever need to change the font family to something else, all we have to do is open the variable collection and update the string variable to a different font family name. Once we update it, any text layer or text style with this variable applied to their font family We'll update accordingly. Let's move on to some other font properties. The Habits team wants the text properties on their responsive blog to change depending on the device's screen size. They spend time auditing their current typography system to identify all unique values across different text property types. They notice they have three variable groups to create, one for font weight, one for font size, 
and one for line height. Font weight can be specified using numbers or names. Number variables support the numeric representation of a font weight, such as 400 or 700, while string variables support their named aliases, such as regular or bold. When it comes to number values, the lower the number, the thinner the text. The higher the number, the thicker the text. Many font authors will also include an alias for certain number values. For example, they might call 800 extra bold or 300 light. Keep in mind, these names are dependent on what the font author decides to call them, and not every font will include the full range of weights. Check the details of the font you're using to make sure you have the correct values for your variables. The Habits team wants to find out should we use the font weight's name or its numeric value? Well, it depends. If you're using only a few font weights in your system, you might choose to use names to keep things simple. On the other hand, if you use many font weights in your system, it might be easier for your team to differentiate between the numeric values versus the names. This is especially true if teammates have different interpretations of certain names. But the funny thing is they all have alternatives, right? And you might have seen some of them. Light is sometimes called demi and sometimes it's called book. Normal is sometimes called book and sometimes it's called regular and black is called heavy and extra bold is called... Either way, we suggest sticking to only one method at a time for consistency. Also, if you're using number variables, be sure to use the font weight's numeric value. If you're using string variables, use the font weight's named alias. Since the Habit app only uses three font weights, the team chose to go with using named aliases. So let's create some string variables for them. The first one will be named font forward slash weight forward slash regular with the value regular. Then we'll create two more for medium and bold. Let's update our text styles again. Open the font weight dropdown and select apply variable. Then select one of the corresponding string variables we just created. Since the value of the variable matches one of the font weight's names, the text knows to use that font weight. Let's do the same for the remaining title textiles, as well as the body textiles. Now let's work on font size and line height. From the audit, the Habits team found that we need this set of numbers to cover font size and line height. For these, we'll need number variables. We'll use t-shirt sizing for their names, but feel free to use a system that works for you and your team. For ideas or to learn more, check out this lesson from our Intro to Design Systems course. For font size, we'll start with a number variable called font forward slash size forward slash xs with the value of 12. Within this group, we'll go all the way up to 4xl in 48. For line height, we'll start with font forward slash line height forward slash xs with a value of 16 and go all the way up to xl and 48. Now, back to our styles. For font size, open the font size drop down and click the variable icon at the bottom. Find the font size group and select a corresponding variable to apply. You could also use the search bar to find the variable by name or group. For line height, hover over the line height field and click the variable icon to open the picker. Find the variable from the line height group and select it to apply. We'll go ahead and do the same for the remainder of the textiles.
The values we just established for our variables and styles come from a mobile-first perspective. Since we want a responsive design for desktop, we'll need a different set of values to accommodate larger screen sizes. This is where variable modes come in. Every variable can store multiple values where each value is meant to be used in a different context. In this case, we have two contexts, mobile and desktop, where your paragraph text may have one font size on mobile and a different size on your desktop. These contexts are called variable modes. The first mode column in our variable collection represents our mobile context. So let's rename it mobile. Then create a new variable mode and name it desktop. The values for font family and font weight on the desktop will remain the same as the mobile version. For font size and line height, most values are larger on desktop than on mobile, but a few of them remain the same. The habits team has already identified the values needed, so let's go ahead and finish updating the desktop modes variables. Now that our variable modes are set up, let's put them to use. Select the desktop version of the blog component variants. Go to the layer section of the right sidebar and open the variable mode switcher. Hover over typography and select the desktop mode. Then select the desktop versions of the blog designs and change those to desktop mode as well. Notice how sizing and spacing got larger each time we changed our designs to the desktop mode. This change improved balance and readability in our designs. Instead of creating brand new styles for the desktop version, and instead of having to find all the layers to apply the new styles to, all we had to do was create a desktop mode and switch the mode on a few frames. Variables and styles support a wide spectrum of design systems by boosting workflows and easing long-term management. What are you most excited about with variables for typography? Let us know in the comments. Also, let us know if you're interested in a deeper dive on when to use variables or styles. More is coming soon to variables, so check out our help center for the most up-to-date information. And be sure to like and subscribe to get notified about Figma's latest product and community news. See you next time.